That is right, it's time for another comparison. Before we go any further, real quickly, I am going to call these two devices routers, not routers. Routers, not routers, and that's what I call them. And you might call them routers, but that's fine, we can talk different. But if you think you're going to have a problem with me saying the word router over and over again, which by the way, the words nearly lost all meaning for me, this may not be the video for you. But otherwise, roll on with the intro. Okay, so in today's video, I'm comparing this, the Synology RT6600AX Wi-Fi 6 router, and I'm comparing it against the recently, at least at the time of recording, released other Synology router, the RW, so the WRX560. Now, these two routers are both from Synology. They're both been released in 2022. They both run on SRM. They've got a tremendous amount in common. However, when you look at them on the shelf when they're ready to buy, you realize there is a distinct price difference between them. And indeed, look at the design of both of the routers. They are remarkably different in how Synology have approached the idea of these routers. Look at them and the difference between them. They have got a lot of different applications in terms of deployment between them. In terms of software, tremendous similarity that we'll touch on later on. But when it comes down to what they're capable of and to what extent they're capable of, there's actually a remarkable degree of difference between them. And it might help if you understand which one's better suited to your deployment. Which one should you go for? Which one should you splash the cash on? And that's what we're going to do today. We're going to compare these two routers and hopefully help you decide which one is better suited to your own network environment. But a few disclaimers straight off the bat. First and foremost, although I'm going to be comparing these two in a number of hardware and software different ways, it's worth highlighting that I have done full extensive reviews and before you buys on both of these routers, which should be linked in the description. Next goes with the software as well. Both of them run the same software known as Synology Router Manager, although there are differences, which I'll touch on later on, to the extent to which they can be utilized. But if you're unfamiliar with both of these devices and indeed Synology routers overall, then I recommend going to the reviews of each of those videos in the description, and probably more importantly, the full 50 minute long review of SIM 1.3, where I cover pretty much the entire range of services of that great, great software. But let's crack on now both of these can actually be used together in a mesh if you choose if you're running a home network environment that's covering over a large distance you can go for both of these and when you do that it's worth highlighting that you can't choose which one is the primary or the main router and the other one being the mesh pods in the product family from synology it goes the most powerful device in the router combination in the mesh has to be the primary so in this case it would be this one the RT6600 would be the primary and the WRX560 would be the secondary or it would be a mesh point same goes for if you use the MR2200 mesh Wi-Fi 5 box this would be lower than both of those two in a mesh scenario. So do bear that in mind. But when you're looking at these devices, let's face it, we're gonna break down the main difference points between them before you choose which one's best for you. We're gonna go with price, we're gonna go with internal hardware, we're gonna go with network connectivity, wireless and wired, and we're gonna talk a bit about the software. So let's tackle that first point there, shall we? The price tag. Because you may have noticed when you're looking to buy these devices that that one is more expensive. There's reasons for that that we'll touch on. But right now in the, I believe it's four, maybe five months since its release, the RT6600AX is knocking around for about 260 to 270 quid here in the UK. If you go dollars or euro, you're getting closer to 299, maybe 305, 310. But that's pretty much the going rate for this prosumer Wi-Fi 6 router. Now, in the case of the WRT560, this is a lot newer, arriving in October 2022, and its price tag is about 180 to about 200 quid, give or take. I think it's a little lower in some places, but you're going to be looking at spending the better half of close to, or bang on, 200 of your local currency for this. So immediately, if what you care about is the stone cold number that you're laying down, that's obviously the lower price. And if that's really, really important to you, thanks for watching, it's been nice seeing you, the door's over there. But it's not about price tag, is it? It's about value, it's about what you're getting for your money. 
And although we'll delve into that a lot deeper, I would say uh, one consistent thing you're going to find from this video is that the better price is the WRX 560, but the better value is almost always going to be the RT 6600, with only a couple of very minor exceptions. And between the two of them, that's what you're going to really have to deal with now. It's going to come down to how much of the hardware that you're buying that you can encompass in that value you're actually going to take advantage of in your home or business environment there. Now, before we get onto the um, internal hardware, we can talk a little bit about the design of these because that will play a big part later on. As you can see, the um, RT6600, um, this device has got six internal antennae, something we'll touch on in a lot more detail later. It can be desk mounted and it can be wall mounted there with an absolute ton of ventilation all the way around it a whole score of leds there on the front for all the multiple bands wired and wireless connections and the ports there on the rear it's got an external psu a chunkier one than this one at a higher power supply but that's really it. it's got that nice sleek synology design and they're really going all in on the one brand ecosystem uh, synology at the moment so it's unsurprising that most of their router series have a very similar aesthetic now the wrx 560 is a big old router look at the size of that thing it is not small this router here it's quite chunky as well just give you a bit of perspective that little mesh pod that we talked about earlier on that's the thickness of that and that's the size of it on the front that is a much, much bigger router. Now, it uses internal antennae that are spread across the entire network of the system. We've got that ventilation all the way around. In my review, I said it kind of looked like the helmets that they have um, in the new Star Wars movies. And it's not wall mountable as well. You're going to have to use a desk or a shelf. And of course, the ventilation is down on the bottom. But all the ports and the connections there on the rear. There's no option to add external antennae either. But... Design isn't really something I'm going to give one point either side for, simply because it's really going to come down to how and where you want to deploy these devices here. And again, when you put them one on top of the other, the size difference between them, I reckon if you really broke it down volumetrically, the, pro the scale difference would be very, very small between these routers. But I just wanted to talk a little bit about design because that's going to impact our next area, which is internal hardware. Now, both of these run on Qualcomm uh, network processors internally with dedicated Qualcomm controllers handling those antennae, external or internal, in a 4x4, 2x2 arrangement. On top of that, it also they both arrive with DDR3 memory and both support Wi-Fi 6 uh, across 2.4 and 5 gigahertz network connections that I'll touch on later on there. They both also support... Uh, uh, um, access to the 5.9 gigahertz radio frequency there for those aren't aware radio frequencies that we you know, utilize or any kind of wi-fi there are certain bands that are restricted or reserved for government um, uh, medical and other kind of services out there and there was one called uh, the, the 5.9 gigahertz frequency band there and that was reserved for transportation and logistics services but in recent year in the re recent years it's kind of been partitioned and successfully allocated for more broader commercial use. And Synology was one of, if not the earliest commercial uh, router brands to jump on board and allow that extra little band lane there to be accessed and therefore more active connections all at the same time available on that radio frequency. So we'll get onto the external connections in a little bit more detail later on, but I want to zoom a little bit back to that internal hardware because it's really, really important because because of the additional beefy um, antennae on this device and that uh, it has resulted in beefier internal hardware as well now to put that into perspective um, the uh, WRX560 has got a quad core 1.4 gigahertz Qualcomm processor and half a gig that's 512 megabytes of DDR3 memory everything gets wrapped up on the 6600AX same, it's got a quad core Qualcomm, but it's 1.8 gigahertz, so a higher clock speed when needed. More power under the bonnet. It's also got twice the memory at 1 gig of DDR3. That means this device can handle more concurrent activities at once at full use. Most low-scale domestic users may not feel it, 
But if you're in a business or dealing with a lot more mesh connections, a lot more devices at once, with this device supporting up to 200 active devices at once on its own outside of mesh, and this one only going up to 150 by comparison, that extra hardware means you have more under the bonnet to get the job done. But also, because this has a greater degree of coverage to think about, and I'll get to that in a moment. But in terms of internal hardware, you will not be surprised that, of course, I think the 6600 AX gives you more bang for your buck. And it's one of the two main reasons why you are paying a little bit more for it. But let's get on to that external wireless connectivity, shall we? Because between the two of them, although there's similarities, once again, the 6600 AX runs with it. Because on the WRX560, this is a dual band router. That means it has a 2.4 gigahertz radio band and a five gigahertz radio band. Now, when they talk about the model IDs on these devices, Predominantly, that is to do with the coverage uh, of network connectivity. They kind of changed the model ID a little bit up in the newer generation. Uh, this was originally, I believe, going to be called the RT3000AX. The name was changed in development. But on the 2.4 gigahertz band, you have got uh, 600 megabits per second or 60 megabytes per second uh, potential bandwidth there. And on the uh, 5 gigahertz one there, you've got 2,400 megabits per second or 240 megabytes per second bandwidth there available. But bear in mind, that's going to be shared across devices. And unless you're using a dedicated um, higher spec connection, the best you're going to get on Wi-Fi 6 on the majority of devices is 1.2 gigabits per second wireless connection. Still a little bit better than a LAN connection, but still nonetheless, that's what you're all you're going to be getting there. Um, you may be able to exceed that, taking advantage of dual band architecture and that 5.9 gigahertz band on a less um, congested uh, lane to exceed it and you know climb towards 2.4, but you need quite a rigorously designed a network adapter for that. Now, in terms of wireless, this device here has got all of that. It's got that and more because this is a tri-band router. That means it's got 2.4 gigahertz and two five gigahertz bands. One of them is 1200 megabits. The other one is 4,800 megabits per second. Thanks to that combination of factors we've talked about with the Synology routers and all of that coverage, it has got an insane 6,600 uh, megabits per second potential coverage that is enormous and again that isn't really towards one device that's shared across multiple but that's an enormous amount of coverage that's open to you and especially when you factor in the idea of having mesh nodes and how that can eliminate some of your frequency coverage on a router in a mesh situation this is going to have more left over whereas this will lose some of its initial coverage to hand that over to the backhaul there for the mesh. So in terms of network connectivity wirelessly, again, the 6600 has just got more in the tank. And a lot of that is to do with those antennae and the hardware inside to get the job done across that all those frequencies and bands. Now, in terms of uh, local connectivity, these devices are all but identical. They both arrive um, with a 1GBE WAN port there in the blue, and they've got multiple LAN ports there in the yellow, with one of them, just the one, being 2.5GBE. They both have that feature. So you can use that dual WAN or LAN port for your greater than gigabit internet speed, uh, internet connection, if you've got that running into a box, make sure it's copper to start with. And again, there are users out there that are less pleased that there's only the one port because it forces you to have to make a difficult choice between using that for a two and a half gig local connection or a two and a half gig potential maximum internet connection, but not both. But still, it's nice to have that there. And there is zero difference between them in terms of that network connectivity. You'd really have to be pushing the system really hard to see any noticeable transmission difference based on that hardware architecture. So we're not really going to give one an advantage over the other. Another thing, they both arrive with um, Wi-Fi on off, a WPS secure, uh, secure un, um, registered authorization connection, but also a USB port there. And again, both of them give you the option to add 
uh, a mobile phone device or a uh, uh, supported LTE or SIM mobile data dongle for a SIM there to have a secondary failover connection if you choose, or you can go ahead and attach a USB drive if you choose, which will allow you to take advantage of file station, media station, threat, um, detect, um, threat uh, prevention, detection, and just a whole swath of applications that you can install on this. Again, they both got the USB, they're both running USB 3.2 Gen 1, 5 gigabits per second connection there. And although there is a huge range of featured services that you can take advantage of via that USB port that are supported by Synology apps, once again, like the 2.5 GBE port there, there's only one USB on both of these. So you're forced to make a choice. You can't have that USB uh, drive and a SIM dongle to have a secondary failover connection for something supported on both of these. You can only have one or the other. So again, no advantage from one over the other, just simply that they both arrive with that kind of hardware architecture. Now, I could go into a lot more information about the software. I really could, but there's not a tremendous amount of point. They both arrive with SRM uh, 1.3 right now, but ultimately it's the same thing over and over again. It's the same software, great features and services. However, when it comes to these two devices, you're gonna get more concurrent connections on this device. You're gonna have more hardware resources to handle all of the different tasks happening simultaneously on the 6600 over that of the WRX560. And although that means that this device has the potential to use more energy over time and therefore cost you more on the electricity bill, it will be such a small difference that it makes no odds. There's no reason counting it. Because if you're already going down the road of getting a prosumer router anyway, the difference between these two is of such small regard that it's not worthy of comparison. And ultimately, ending today's comparison, the 6600AX, as you must have known coming into this video, is the better router. There's a reason it has a higher price tag. Now, this device here is very close to release and therefore, its price tag is a lot closer to the RRP recommended retail price than that of the four to six month old RT6600 AX, which has had a lot more fluidity in its pricing. So as time wears on, we're probably gonna see the price tag of these distance itself a lot better than it currently is, because right now that is less than a hundred pounds um, less than this. It's close to 60 or maybe even 70 and therefore the hardware advantages that this brings you with that price difference makes it at the time of recording just the better choice overall and if you can spare the Wonga go for the 6600. Now if you're watching this part or midway through 2023 it may be a different story as the price for this may have gone down and therefore the gap more noticeable and if you if the price difference is a hundred quid or so and you uh, different and you don't think you're going to need all those hardware resources you're a small outfit you're not looking to mesh um, and stuff like that then chances are this is still going to be a great choice for you because you've still got access to all of those great srm services 2.5 gbe access to the 5.9 gigahertz frequency access on there and a stream of different advantages too Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There should be a link in the description to all of the stuff I've talked about today, along with all the videos and the articles that I have referenced, so you can better understand SRM and these two NASs. So check those out. There's the free advice section over there at NAS Compares and the free community forum, Ask NAS Compares. And there's buy links to all the products I've talked about today. If you're planning to buy from Amazon, then please use those links. If not, you can buy anywhere you wish, but if you were gonna to go to Amazon anyway, why not use the links? It doesn't cost you anything extra, and if this video has helped you, then using those links means we get a little bit of a kickback, which helps us carry on doing what we do. I'll let you guys decide, but apart from that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you next time.